If you want to be able to get more fine-tuned control over the movement of your animation, you'll need to be using the Curve Editor. So that's this bit up the top. To see any movement track, or any track for that matter, that has this little symbol inside the Curve Editor, you just need to click on this little graph button here. And then in order to center the whole of your movement track inside the Curve Editor, you use these buttons. This one all will generally do everything, but you can also center it horizontally and vertically as well. So this is showing a representation of the X, Y and Z movement of this animation down here, which has three keyframes. And you can see that there are keyframes for each of the X, Y, Z tracks here that match exactly the ones down in the movement track. Now you can turn on or off the whole curve of something just by clicking on this little square here. Or you can choose to turn on or off just particular tracks. So I could turn off, for example, my X track and just leave my Y and my Z showing up here. If you select any key, it will show you what the interpolation mode for that is, and we'll talk a bit more about that later. And you'll get movement handles that mean that you can adjust the curve of what you've got selected, but also the value of that particular key. You can also right click on any key and set its time and value by typing in a value into the box there. So let's now look at the different key interpolation modes that you can set for your keyframes within a movement track or actually any kind of track that you have within Matinee. The key interpolation modes affect the shape of the curve that your movement is going to make and that affects the way that the movement will look on screen. The first three here, auto, auto clamped, user and break, all relate to curves. Linear creates straight line action and constant creates action that leaps from pose to pose. You can set these interpolation modes in three places. You can choose an interpolation mode from the interpolation drop down menu before you add a key or you can right click on a keyframe after you've created it inside your movement track and choose one of the modes from the pop down menu or if you have the curve editor open you can select a keyframe and then use one of these buttons to change its interpolation mode. Once you've set an interpolation mode on a key, your keyframes inside your movement track are color coded. So let's have a look at what those different interpolation modes look like when you actually create an animation. So here I have an animation of a cube with three keyframes. The cube moves from left to right and it rises up and then down again as it does so. At the moment, all three keyframes are set to curve auto clamped and this is what its curve editor looks like. When you press play on the animation, you can see that it moves in a nice smooth parabolic arc. Next one we're going to look at is linear. So now all three keyframes have been set to linear and you can see how the lines on the curve editor are now straight instead of curved. This is what the movement path looks like now that we've changed those keyframes to linear. And when you play, you'll see that the cube moves now in a straight line between the three key points instead of in a curved line like it did before. Lastly, let's look at constant. So we've got three keyframes all set to constant. And you can see here that the value for one keyframe is set and it travels along in a straight line until it pops up at the point that it hits the next keyframe. Once you have a movement path with constant set, you get this different kind of representation of the movement path, but actually this doesn't represent what the movement will look like at all. Where these large dashed lines are, you're not gonna see anything. That's what they're indicating. All you're gonna see is the cube pop on at each position of the keyframe, as if you were doing straight cuts between each of those keyframes. Let's look at the difference now between auto clamped and break. The key difference this has is when you have auto clamped set and you move the movement handles on the edge of a curve, you'll see that they both move together in tandem. If however you change the keyframe to be break, 
what you're then able to do is to move each handle independently. The last technique that I'm going to cover that allows you to have some more fine-tuned control over your animation is to split your translation and rotation movement tracks. So to do that you want to right click on your movement track and choose split translation and rotation. This gives you now six different individual settings for the translation which is the movement in XYZ and the rotation in XYZ. I'm just going to shut the translation and then do a rotation on this cube in this X dimension here. So with the middle keyframe in the X axis I'm going to set its value to be 90. Then I'm going to click on the last keyframe and set its value to be 180. So splitting translation and rotation gives you just more precise control over each of the individual elements of your movement.